parish. Uh, and I uh, encourage you to read all of the announcements in the bulletin, uh, but we're going to use this time for our senior warden, George Berguin, uh, to talk a little bit uh, about uh, what St. James means to him uh, and to walk you through the, uh, the, the campaign and the campaign pledge card. So thank you. Good morning. <clears throat> it's nice to be among friends. And I'm here to instruct you on how to complete our pledge card for the Connected Capital Campaign. Now within your service bulletin is an insert that it has a display of our sample pledge card. And on the reverse side, there's a set of Q and A's that will be helpful. So you may want to be referring to your, your insert during the course of my address. But first, Please listen to this. Could you hear that, Effie? Isn't that a marvelous and magnetic sound? That joyful noise comes from the playground just on the other side of our ascension window. And it occurs most every day our school is in session. Our previous senior warden, Bill Chenur, described it as a universal sound that can be heard around the world in places where joy, love, and hope reside. For me, it's a soundtrack to a journey in faith because it's an outward and audible sign of an inward and spiritual grace that is being nurtured and enriched within our students by the teachers, staff, and parents through the love of Jesus. I also know that it's a sound that grows sweeter with age. Just ask any grandparent or great-grandparent. And as you may have seen, from our student speak campaign videos, the bright-eyed eagerness of our students is invigorating and rejuvenating our parish. Our school has transformed our church to an active, multi-generational one with a vibrant future in contrast to so many churches across America that are presently experiencing shrinking memberships. Besides providing educational space, St. James is providing our students with a Christian education grounded in the Episcopal identity of scripture, tradition, and reason in the spirit of God's love for all his children. And in return, did you know that the school is the largest pledger to our church's annual operating budget with an amount pledged of over $66,000 for the current year? In addition, the school is paying over $40,000 per year in shared expenses for our common spaces. Did you know that about 400 of our church members, nearly half of our total membership, have a connection to our school? Our school is causing our church to thrive. And our church is causing our school to thrive. This combination or connectedness has created a powerful spiritual energy one that I've rarely witnessed in my 38 years of coming to St. James. So how do we fill out this pledge card? Let's refer to the sample. First of all, you need to know that you have three years through 2019 to pay your pledge, thus creating the opportunity to consider a larger pledge. Over the three years, you may make installments on a monthly or annual or quarterly basis, even weekly, whatever suits your circumstances. You may pay by check or by credit card online, although to avoid burdensome transaction fees to St. James, please consider use of your credit card on a monthly basis rather than weekly. So go to your sample card and see on the section of the card entitled, Your Gift. And there's a line below indicating, I pledge. 
And that's where you indicate the periodic amount of your gift. And then on the following space to the right is where you indicate the installment basis. Is it monthly, quarterly, annually? You can also make a one-time lump sum gift. And then further to the right, well, that's where the big number goes that indicates your total gift over three years. Please consider sourcing your pledge from assets as well as from income. A gift of stock may be given directly to the campaign, and this may present a tax benefit for those with appreciated stocks having a low cost basis. Please consult your tax advisor before considering this option. There's also a place for you to let us know if you're interested in making a planned gift to St. James, and that would enhance the financial resources of our parish in the future. That expression of faith would be truly welcomed, and it may give, give someone on a fixed income a chance to give more than they otherwise would be able. The planned giving option is part of our campaign goal to increase our $1 million endowment fund by $500,000 in committed gifts. As Father Ben said, your pledge card will be distributed next Sunday, April 2nd, during our services, at which time you will be asked to complete it and to return it during the service offertory. If you're unable to join us or make your pledge next Sunday, then please return it as soon as possible thereafter. Pledge cards will be available after April 2nd. Now, let's consider how your gift will become larger, larger than the one you may currently be considering. We have a gap between what we expect to receive in pledges, and that figure is estimated at just under two and a quarter million dollars. And the expense of this project, about $2.8 million, a difference of over $500,000. So this is the time where we, where over the next week, we'll plan a trip, a journey, a journey with the Holy Spirit. So bring along your Bible or the Book of Common Prayer, or better yet, a St. James Pictorial, and go to a quiet place with your heart and mind and the Holy Spirit. Together, you will begin counting and sourcing all the blessings you've received. And by sourcing, I mean determining that your blessings are coming directly from God or from someone close to you who loves you or someone you've never met or heard of but who made a gift inspired by God's love that you're experiencing today. An example of the latter would be the people here in Warrington who founded St. James 201 years ago. Can anyone name one of those persons? That's okay. I know Richard and Betty Gookin would know, and not because they were around 201 years ago, <laughs> but because they took the time as historians to research that information on the founding of our church. So count the Gookins as blessings to us also. Other examples would be our former rector, Prentice Kenzer, <coughs> who with other parishioners founded our preschool in 1982, the same preschool that exists today. And Father Chris Pierce, whose vision led us to the creation of our kindergarten and elementary school just a decade ago. And head of school, Stacy Irvin, whose leadership and committed staff realized that vision. Father Ben is a blessings multiplier, so be sure to include him. Count Jesse Radcliffe and all our choir members since we were blessed with the best music ministry in the 38 years I've been coming here. So keep counting and sourcing until you reach a number like 50,000. Blessings, that is. Or until you've reached a point where you feel pretty good about how fortunate you are, whichever event occurs first. This don't stop there, because this is where the fun begins. It's like you're on the threshold of a transformation. It's like being on top of a mountain, on a ski slope. 
It's like being on horseback during a fox hunt, right when the hounds pick up the scent, or in an amusement park at the top of a water slide or roller coaster. Hold on tight to the Holy Spirit because this part of the journey will be exhilarating. By now, you've already decided to make a gift to the campaign. After all, that's the sort of thing that happens when you choose to hang out with the Holy Spirit. So now it's how large your gift will be. So you begin counting with the Holy Spirit the blessings that will be sourced to your gift. So look around at everyone who's in church with you today. And don't forget to smile. Father Ben, consider Father Ben, the choir members and members of the Altar Guild and Flower Guild. Consider persons with disabilities who will now have the ability to join us. And Stacy Irvin and her teachers, staff, and students of the school. The larger your gift, the bigger the impact of the blessings you are conveying. So keep counting, because your trip is moving faster now. Your blessings are growing exponentially as you look into the future and you see people you don't recognize, but they're doing the same things you've always done and seen in St. James. Infants being baptized, kids learning in school, seniors and second graders sharing shy smiles during Wednesday chapel, the gospel being preached, the organ playing and the choir singing. Envision all the things that bring you to St. James and you see that they will continue to go on through your gift. So keep going. The choir will be playing your favorite hymn. For me, that's Amazing Grace accompanied by bagpipes. Sorry, Jesse. <laughs> In the background, you hear, you hear children laughing and playing. And as you go by, you'll see friends from St. James and they'll be waving and blowing kisses. How often does that happen? By now, you should feel like you're on the downside of a roller coaster or hurtling headlong down a mountain trail. Your arms are in the air. You're laughing and shouting with exhilaration. The Holy Spirit is next to you, laughing and shouting too. You feel a little out of control and reckless. But that's OK, because joy is fearless. Joy is fearless and empowering when you place yourself in God's hands. So how do we bring this journey to a safe and happy landing? Well, we'll all come back here. The church will be filled like it's Easter Sunday. The Holy Spirit will be zapping us with excitement. That Holy Spirit, he's, a place, he's pretty playful, just like a puppy or a young child. And up here at the altar table, will be Father Ben, raising his arms and inviting us to God's table. And above him will be God, smiling upon us. And to God's right hand will be Jesus. And he will be saying, truly, you can do this. Truly, you can build my kingdom here at St. James. And so we will, with his help. Now you know that this journey is all a metaphor. In actuality, when all these blessings are rushing through your head, there you'll be, sitting calmly in your home in a place of quiet repose. We're Episcopalians, after all. But that quiet repose will be an outward sign of an inward and spiritual grace that is raging with joy. And that's where I want us all to be when we arrive here next Sunday and are asked to complete our pledge card in a state of overwhelming joy, celebrating the gifts we have received and the gifts we can make, God's gifts. Now, if you'd like a little help finding this inner joy, if you're looking for a shortcut because you have a busy week ahead of you, then go to a place where you can listen to this.
as long as that joyful noise is coming from the other side of our ascension window, there will always be faithful followers, followers of Jesus worshiping in these pews here at St. James. Thank you, George, for your inspired words and beautiful vision, and thanks to you and Eileen for all that you all do. I now gather us uh, for worship, so take a deep breath uh, and stand as we begin our worship. 